So today we're going to investigate this really interesting way to take one sequence that's defined in terms of another and invert the relationship to figure out how the latter sequence is actually related to the former one. And especially we're going to see how to take something like this, where if you have bn equal to binomial coefficients multiplied by a sequence a sub i, where the ith element of the a sequence is multiplied by n choose i, to take that and invert into a relationship that expresses a sub n in terms of the b sub i's. So we're going to start off with something a little bit more easy than this particular example to get a sense of what it is we can do to do this inversion process. And it's going to involve thinking about the series that generate these particular sequences, the AIs and the BIs. So we'll start with a different example where say we knew that we had two sequences, a sequence B sub N and a sequence A sub N, where the nth term in the B sequence is equal to a0 plus A1 plus A2 all the way up to An. The question is, can we figure out what A sub N is in terms of the B sequence? Now, there's actually a relatively straightforward way to do this, but we're going to use this as a model for attacking the more complicated problem we saw at the beginning. So the idea is to write down what are called the ordinary generating functions for these two sequences. These are like the series that you see in a, a calculus class for the individual sequences. So we'll have the series a sub x or a of x, which has as this x to the nth coefficient, the a sub n term of the a sequence, and the series b, which has the b sub n term as the coefficient of x to the n for the b series. All right, so we're going to see how a recurrence relation like this is going to have the effect of having a relationship between the two series a of x and b of x. So how are we going to see this relationship? Well first I want to recall that if you take the series 1 over 1 minus x and expand it, its expression as a series is the sum n equals 0 to infinity x to the n. And th there are many reasons for this. You can take the nth derivative of this and evaluate to zero and find out that this is the Taylor series for this. You can also multiply by one minus x this entire series and find out that all of the coefficients cancel and the only thing you're left with is the constant coefficient. But this is one of these series that you see a lot in calculus, so I won't go through the process of figuring out why this series expands to the right-hand side. But the point is, if we actually take this series and multiply by the a of x series, let's see what happens. So the series for 1, one, one over 1 minus x is this thing over here. And then the series for a sub x or a of x is this series right over here. So if you multiply the coefficients, we notice that the x to the k coefficient of this series is going to take an a sub i coefficient and multiply by 1 in this series right over here. So for example, if you wanted to know the x cubed coefficient, we'd have a naught x to the 0 times the x cubed here, and then a1 x times the x squared here, etc. So in general, uh, the coefficient of x to the n when we expand this is going to be the sum of all of the coefficients a0, a1, a2, all the way up to a n. But that is precisely what b sub n is. And so this tells us that this expression here is actually a closed form for the b of x series, whose coefficients were the b coefficients and the b sequence. So b of x is actually the series 1 over 1 minus x times the series for a of x. Now our goal was to find out what the a sequence is in terms of the b sequence. So we can do that by now multiplying by the 1 minus x to see a relationship for a of x explicitly in terms of b of x. And if we expand, we'll be able to figure out what the ai's are in terms of the bi's. So let's actually do that. So taking this expression 1 minus x times b of x, we'll get b of x minus x times b of x. Now let's write down the actual series for b of x and then equate terms. So b of x is this series right over here. And so b of x minus x b of x is the series for b of x minus 
Now, a shift in the terms because we're, because we're multiplying by this x right over here. Okay, we'll re-index so that we can collect the coefficients appropriately. So this sum right over here has this extra x term. So if we re-index, this is the same as starting with an exponent of 1, but then so having the index for the b sub i series be 1 less than the exponent of x. Okay, so if we keep track of the x to the m coefficient of a of x, using this expression for it, we'll get b sub m for this contribution, and then b sub m minus 1 for the contribution of this latter series right over here, giving us b sub m minus b sub m minus 1. So that's exactly the expression for the ai's in terms of the bi's. It's a pretty cool process, uh, and you might think, well, don't you have to worry about things like uh, radius of convergence to be able to actually do the multiplication that we said? Well, it turns out that you can actually lift everything here to uh, a formal setting where you work with rings of power series. Now, I'm not going to talk about that in this video, but that allows you to do these calculations without having to worry about radius of convergence arguments. Okay. Now, one thing about this example is you could have kind of seen that this is going to be the case to begin with. Um, if you take a look at the original sequence, uh, you notice that if you wrote out b sub n minus 1, you'd get all the terms except for a n. So you can subtract and you'd get something very similar to the conclusion that we drew. So let's see a different example that will get us to our original problem where the B sequence is defined in terms of the A sequence, but it's not as straightforward as the example that we had here. So the example I'm going to look at is this example right here, where B of N is the sum of the A Ks, but now we have a little bit of an added contribution, where the A Ks are scaled by constants that increase by 1 as the index of the A sequence shifts. Right, so for example, b sub 3 would be a0 plus 2a1 plus 3a2 plus 4a3. So this is a little more complicated to invert, but let's use the same philosophy that we did in this last example to see um, how we can do this. So again, we'll write down series for the a sub n sequence and for the b sub n sequence, so they look like this. All right, um, and now the thing to notice is the series that generates this coefficient right over here is actually the series of 1 over 1 minus x squared. If you go to a calculator or go to the Wolfram Alpha and actually expand this series, you'll get exactly this expression on the right. You can actually see this a different way. You notice this is the product of 1 over 1 minus x times itself. And we know that the series for 1 over 1 minus x is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, etc. So you can multiply that series by itself, and you'll observe that the coefficients become the counting numbers. Okay, so what do we do with this? Well, now, because we have this relationship here, where these coefficients come from this series, we'll play the same game again. If we multiply the a of x series by this series right over here, the coefficients will produce exactly these coefficients here. Now, you notice I'm not going through the individual steps, and the reason is because this is the same argument that we made for the previous example. We just changed uh, what the coefficients beside these AI sequences are. Okay, so B of X then is going to equal 1 over 1 minus X squared times this series for A of X. So now if you want to express the AI sequence in terms of the BI sequence, we can multiply by the denominator that we have right over here. If we do that, we get A of X is 1 minus X all squared times B of X. And so if we expand that polynomial that we multiplied by the B series, we get that the A series is 1 minus 2X plus X squared times the series for the BI sequence. Okay, so now we'll multiply one by one and compare coefficients. If we multiply out the 1 minus x squared times this series, we'll get the original series itself by multiplying by the 1, then minus 2x times the series, and then plus x squared times the series, which will shift the indices 
in this a similar way that we had before. So for the minus 2x, we'll get a shift by 1 because we're multiplying by x. And so we'll start this series from m equals 1, where we now have to index by bm minus 1 times x to the m because we've multiplied by this extra x. And a similar thing here, we'll have this, the series m equals 2 to infinity of bm minus 2 times x to the m. So if you collect the x to the m coefficient of this entire thing right over here, we get an, a b sub m over here. Over here, we'll get negative 2 times bm minus 1. And then over here, we'll get a bm minus 2. That gives us this entire expression here in total. But the x to the m coefficient of this right side is exactly a sub m because of this equality here. And so this tells us that for any m, a sub m is this expression right over here in terms of the b's. Now, this wouldn't have been as obvious as the first example that we saw to begin with. But it's kind of cool that we're able to do this process. So now, let's see how we can use this philosophy to finally answer our original question. Now, our original question, remember, is that b sub n is the sum of n choose i, a sub i. Um, and instead of looking at the ordinary generating series, we're going to look at something called the exponential generating series, which are a little bit different, but you'll see why they're very useful in the context that we're looking at it. So we're given this equality that we talked about before. And now we're going to write down these series instead. So you notice these are like a little bit different than the series for the AI sequence and the BI sequence themselves. Instead, we're dividing by an n factorial. You can kind of see why this might be helpful. If you take a look at this expression here, the n choose i part, we'll have an n factorial in the numerator, which you can divide by n factorial over here. And then we'll have an i factorial of the denominator, which we can pair with this ai. And that'll give us some kind of expression in terms of the coefficients of these series instead of the original series for the ais and the bis themselves. All right, so let's play around. So we'll find a direct relationship between the a of x series and the b of x series. OK, so first of all, you notice in the b of x, we have a bn here. And bn is this expression right over here. So we're going to go ahead and plug that right into the series. So this looks rather complicated, but let's take our time and figure out how to unravel this situation right over here. So if we interchange the sums, and we can do so when the absolute value of x is small. But of course, if we're looking in a formal setting, we don't have to care about that. So we'll do that, and we get something like this. So the term n choose i x to the n over n factorial will survive whenever i is at whenever n is at least i. And ai will appear as a coefficient um, every time. Okay, now because as we mentioned, n choose i is n factorial over i factorial times n minus i factorial, this expression right over here can be rewritten as 1 over i factorial times x to the n over n minus i factorial. And the reason is because the n factorials in the numerators will cancel each other out. So now, if we do that and make a substitution where we let m be this n minus i quantity, right? then this inner sum here, which is written right over here, we can make the substitution of this expression in for here. And we'll get the 1 over i factorial outside, and then whatever remains here, which we can write as x to the m plus i, because m is n minus i, and then multiplied by m factorial, because that's what n minus i is. And so we're left with 1 over i factorial times the sum m equals 0 to infinity of x to the m plus i over m factorial. So now the thing with this is this series we actually know a nice explicit expression for. If we take the x to the i factor out, we get x to the i over i factorial times the sum m equals 0 to infinity of x to the m over m factorial. But this here, can be rewritten in the closed form as e to the x. 
So this entire expression we had here can be simplified to x to the i over i factorial times e to the x. Now substituting that back in, we get the sum i equals 0 to infinity of a i, x to the i over i factorial e to the x, which we can take the e to the x out and get this series here. But this series here is actually the original exponential generating function for the a sub i's. So this is e to the x times the series for the a sub i's when we look at it from the exponential point of view. Now our goal, again, as usual, is we knew how to express the b sequence in terms of the a sequence. We want to express the a sequence in terms of the b sequence. So we can multiply by e to the negative x and we get this. So now unraveling this expression, we get a of x is e to the negative x times the series for the b's. But we know that e to the negative x expands as the sum m equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the m over m factorial x to the m. So a of x is the product of these two things together. So now we'll do the multiplication and see how we can extract the coefficient for the ai. Right, the coefficient of x to the r in this thing, we're going to have to take, or x to the r of r factorial because we're doing the exponential generating series. We'll have to take a coefficient from this and a matching coefficient where the exponents add to r. Right, so we'll get a negative 1 to the m over m factorial. And then the matching coefficient in this series must have an index of m r minus m for the product of the exponents of the x variables to be r. So we'll get a negative one to the m over m factorial here, and then we'll get a b sub r minus m, one over r minus m factorial right over here. Okay, by now the coefficient on the left-hand side is actually a r over r factorial. So fixing this, we should get an expression where we multiply this thing by r factorial. The r factorial m factorial r minus m factorial will combine to an r choose m. And so now we see exactly what the expression is going to be. It's going to be a r being a sum of binomials, but with negative alternating exponents multiplied by the b r minus m's or the b i sequence. So this is a really cool technique that you can use whenever you have a sequence to find in terms of sums of another sequence. Taking the two sequences and looking at their generating series and then appropriately multiplying to figure out the latter series in terms of the former.